to the channel again. Uh, it's new camera day. I've, I'm delving into the world of medium format film photography again. This time I have bought a 6x45 and the one I've gone with is the Bronica ETRS. This bad boy. Uh, it is a, as I say, 6x4.5 camera, medium format, 120mm film. Uh, the reason I've got this one over the others that are out there is because it's modular so it comes in uh, different parts so you can take the back off so you can use two films at the same uh, time if you wanted to do colour and say black and white you can change the films over uh, lenses can get different lenses again uh, got the viewfinder on this one instead of the over the top looking and also i um, got myself the handle instead of the winder uh, so that's on its way. Uh, so I just wanted to do a quick overview of it, uh, box opening, uh, which I did. Uh, and just to show a quick overview of some of the images I've took with it. So uh, I've had it a couple of days now. Uh, the weather's been really bad up here in Manchester and Stockport Way. So what I did one afternoon at about half five, six o'clock, I got bored. So what we did is we put some... Chromapan Action Pro Line 400 black and white film in it. Uh, I got this cheap from Analog Wonderland. Uh, great place to go for film if you need some in the UK. Uh, seven day delivery, but they are quite cheap. Uh, yeah, so I threw this in the other day. Uh, went up into the Peak District, so we went up to the bottom of when it's passed, took some of the shots going up and then we went back over the, through Hope, uh, through Bamford, over to the Snake Pass. Um, we thought, I thought I'd get some at the top of the Snake Pass around sunrise, but as soon as you got to the top of the Snake Pass, visibility was about 10 metres at the very most. So what we did, uh, for anyone that knows the area, Snake Pass, uh, from the Peak District comes down into Glossop, so we went through Glossop and then we went to Hyde Mottram. We went to a place called, uh, I'm not sure what it's called, but it's at the top of Matley Lane for the locals that know it. And it's a little dirt path and you can look over Hyde, Manchester, Tameside. So I got a few pictures of there. Uh, and it was a very overcast day, but it was breaking through the sun for sunset, so we got some really nice colours. But my issue was I was shooting in black and white and I haven't got a second lens uh, back at the minute, sorry, to put the uh, colour one. So uh, I took some pictures there and then I realised I only had four or five shots left. So what we did, we went up to the top of Matley Lane. It was uh, about 20 minutes after sunset. So what we did is just shot some over the Manchester of the skylines just to waste the film really and see if it does. Uh, I've sent that film off to DS Colour Labs in Didsbury, uh, local uh, film development shop there in Manchester that I use. Uh, not too bad prices, so for the 15 shots development, uh, prints at I think they're going to be 5x7 or 7x5, and also a digital version, 17.99 overall for everything, which I didn't think was that bad. For 35 mil, I think it's 12 pound. Uh, I dropped a 35 mil one off as well because I've got an old camera here that me mate gave me that was his dad's, and just to test it really to see what that's like. So we'll be getting both of them developed, and they should be coming in the next day or so, and then we'll go through the uh, the images. So the reason I got the Bronica over, say, the Mamayas or the Fuji, mainly is the price and looking at the reviews, yes, this is the smallest uh, format for medium format at 645, but like I say, I've used a 6x6 old one for that was 50 quid and the images weren't great, which were on my last video, and this seemed to be a good entry level one for proper medium format photography where it's interchangeable lenses, it's modular so you can change more or less every bit on it uh, and just to have a go, so this wasn't that dear, uh, it was about half the price of what the memorizer are going at at the minute, especially the 
6B7s that they've got going on and the 6B6s. Uh, so yeah, like I say, I've used it once, fully enjoyed it. It is a heavy beast of a, of a camera. So I don't think I'll be doing much street photography with it because it you, your arms are going to get achy. But like I say, I've got a handle coming which has a shutter speed, uh, sorry, shutter on it there, at least, and a clip so you don't have to keep winding this round because uh, at the minute the let me see there the release is there, so you have to hold it like this, do the, do the uh, focus and then click. Uh, what I did is I put it on my tripod. I think most of the time I'm using this will be by with a tripod I will do go out sometimes handheld just to give it a try see how it goes uh, one thing this version I've got there is multiple uh, viewfinders you can get so as I say it just comes off like this this one is the basic prism so it doesn't have a uh, light meter inside it so some of them have a light meter that's attached where you can put the ISO uh, and it reads the the scene and it'll give you a a light reading so you can put your settings now because this was a cheapish one it didn't come with it at the moment in time for the shots I've used uh, the other day which you'll be seeing shortly I just used a, a phone on my app uh, called I think it's called viewfinder uh, I'll I'll do a, a video with that if people want at some point but the plan is at some point to buy a digital light meter but for the ones I want with buying the camera stuff it's just out of reach at the moment in time especially because I want to buy another back for this first uh, I've just bought the handle and also uh, I've bought a couple of bits of film so yeah so here are the shots as you can see with this first image this is from when it's past looking up and it's very faded out uh, so I got my uh, exposure all wrong with this one. Uh, like I say, I was using an app which turned out not to be the best app in the world. Since then I've got a good app and it has worked. Uh, so this exposure is, is not that great. Uh, the second one, which is the same shot but with a different exposure, so it's a bit of a darker uh, image. Uh, yes, I could probably pull some of the shadows out in Lightroom, but... It was just a test, just to see how it outcome. Also, it could be that it is a cheap film as well. This is kind of the pattern of the uh, the rest of the images. So here's image four, which is again the bottom of, sorry, image three, which again is the bottom of when it's pass on its side. This is the better one of the few. You can see a bit more details in the shadows, in the dark. Uh, then for image four, again, it is the same, uh, but a bit darker. There is the car coming down that you've got. Then after that, these next few images, uh, more or less up till the end now, these are all the shots from the top of Matley Lane and Werner Flow. And these are just, they just, the sky's alright on some of them, and then they, uh, the ground's just dark, or vice versa, where the ground's okay, but the sky's blown out. So just metered it all wrong with the app. Uh, Again, I could probably save some, but I just want to show you how they are straight from the digital copies. Uh, but there is a couple that are okay -ish and probably could be saved. But I'm not going to because there's nothing spectacular. This last one is probably my favourite shot of them all because it has come out quite well. Uh, I think I was at about 5.6 with this one and, and I believe it was 4 seconds. Uh, now... As you can see, it's a bit grainy, and uh, it's not pin sharp, or it's not that sharp. Now, I have had some colour, uh, better film developed, and that has come out a lot better than this one. So I think it is just a case of the the Froma Pam Action 400 is a cheap film, because it was nearly a third of the price of the others, uh, so it was really cheaper. Uh, but overall... I'm I'm happy with the tests. Not happy that some of them didn't come out, but I believe that was just my app and me getting my settings wrong. Uh, because as I said, I've done some colour with a different app, and they've all come out bob on. They've uh, none has been an issue at all. So yeah, that's the the one 
20 images and I'm, I'm happy with the overall test. So I did mention that I'm getting some 35mm film uh, developed as well, uh, pictures and the digital versions. Um, the reason I'm doing that is because getting into a bit more film photography I, I was like I've got a couple of old 35mm cameras that I've been given in the past, a couple of years ago. I really wanted to get into it then, so a couple of mates gave me a couple of cameras of their dads to say, here, have a play with it. Uh, I've got one, uh, which my mate Brian gave me. His dad's is it's up there. Uh, I have used that once before, about two and a half years ago, and the pictures came out great. Uh, it's a bit of a newer camera, so it's all uh, electrical in there, and it, it works a treat. Uh, but this time I've used this one which is my uh, Canon AV1 point and shoot uh, film camera 35mm. Uh, I dug it out because I remembered I had it, I've got two lenses, this is the 50 1.8 and then I have I think it's a 70-200, to 200. Uh, not sure on the aperture that's downstairs at the minute. Uh, I've done a few shots with, well, I've, most of them I've done with a 50mm and I've done a couple with a telephoto one. Uh, I randomly tried some with a moon uh, to see what it does look like. Uh, one thing to note about this camera, which I'm not sure if they're going to come out or not, is normally when you half press the button, inside you're supposed to have the shutter speed pop up, it tells you on uh, the side. That doesn't work unless you've got it in uh, bulb or for a selfie, but it only ever goes to 60 of a second. So. I'm not sure if this is even working properly. Also, the film that was in this is one that's been in it since I got it, and I've had it a good three or four years now. So, we'll see how they come out, and uh, hopefully they'll come out quite well. Uh, if not, then the camera might be bust. Uh, the only way really to know is see how they come out. If they come out, great, it's working. If they don't come out, there is a chance it could be the film, because like I say, it's been in here for three or four years or it could be that the camera is naff. Uh, the only other way to see is really to throw another film in and see. Uh, now I do have another 35mm film on order that should be here in the next couple of days, uh, but there is another point and shoot camera that I prefer out there which is a little bit more compact which is the Olympus XA. Uh, it's an aperture priority uh, camera, so on the side you can choose what aperture you've got, I think it goes uh, 2.8, 5.6, 8, 11, 22, you get a few, and you can manually choose the focus as well, uh, which is great. Uh, now, I'd love one. They're going for a little bit above what I want to pay, because I'm a bit of a tight ass uh, at the moment, but I'm going to keep my eye out on eBay, see what's around and see if I can pick one up fairly cheap. If I can, we'll do a video. Uh, so, I have not. I don't know if these images have come out well or not because they're still processing but if they have come out well here they are now as you can see there with the 35 mils they didn't come out it was just blank so uh, looking at this when I've uh, looked into it a little bit what there is is there is a indicator inside uh, even though it is just point and shoot uh, kind of more aperture priority type point and shoot when you're looking at it on the right hand side there is your shutter speed and a little arrow is supposed to go up and down which indicates roughly what speed you're at and that's not working so I don't think it's fully working which is why they've all come out black uh, so it is a shame let me just dump that over there uh, but we have uh, another camera that's coming in which is my mum and dad's uh, I don't know the model of it, but if it's the model they believe it is, it's an earlier model of that, which is fully manual, which is what I want, which is great. So we'll uh, we'll come back to that one uh, and the 35 mil side of it. So it is a shame, but these things happen. Uh, we have got some other 35 mil uh, coming uh, as long as they do work as well. Which is, I was in a vintage emporium in Stockport and we got a panoramic 35mm camera, which is this little plastic beam. Uh, and this was a fiver. Uh, and apparently in the 70s, 80s, they were massive. And the way it makes it panoramic, rather than stitching two together, it chops off the bottom and top of a 35mm. So inside here, where it's normal rectangle, it's even more of a stretch rectangle because they've just blocked the top and the bottom off. So that's been developed as we speak now. 
so I don't know if that comes out, but we will be doing a video if it comes out well. So uh, watch this space on that one. Uh, but overall, a little disappointed it didn't work, but hey ho, there was a 50-50 chance it wasn't going to work. So my overall thoughts of the the camera for the first go of it. Uh, simple to use, really easy. Yes, it is a little bit bulky, but now I've got the new grip on the camera. So I've got the, the new handle here uh, with the winder, which is easier, and the shutter uh, button, which is so easy. I've put an L bracket on it as well for me tripod and also when I'm handheld I find it a little bit easier to hold it like that and then just do the the focusing uh, when I was in the peaks doing the colour shots that I've had on that'll be on the next video I did a couple handheld with it uh, and it worked great uh, doing it this way more steady I haven't got the steadiest of hands so the it's a very good way of doing it also had to put the L bracket on quite big like this uh, because the shutter release is there and when I've got the cable on, it sticks out, so it needs to be, if I put it that way, it needs to be on. So yeah, uh, so overall, happy with the way the camera worked. Not happy with the first app I used. Uh, the second app that I used for the colour shots that will come up in the next video, I've worked a treat, so I'm going to start using that app a lot more till I either get myself a light meter or I fork out for the prism viewfinder that has the light meter built into it. So yeah. We'll leave it there. Great camera so far. Uh, sharp when I've uh, got the colour film, so when I put decent film in it, they are sharp and they are good. Uh, so yeah, overall good. Happy. Can't wait to try it again. As I say, the 35mm, that's just really a, a playful test. Uh, I'm going to concentrate on the medium format for now, but the 35mm I just like to have in my back pocket or in the bag, just to have to do snapshots really. Uh, and then I can practice the processing of the film and developing and all that side of it a bit easier and a bit cheaper as well for with a 35mm. So, uh, we'll leave it there. Till the next one. See you soon.